Hi everyone. Welcome back to Frappe School. This is the second chapter in our inventory management course. In this chapter, we will be discussing inventory accounting. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand types of inventory system, types of inventory valuation and how to configure these in ERP next. Inventory is an asset for a company and therefore it also affects accounting. In addition to the stock ledger, traditionally the effect of inventory movement on accounts has to be updated manually which is also known as periodic inventory system. The periodic inventory system is suited for smaller companies that maintain minimal inventory. It is easier for smaller companies to do an inventory count periodically and estimate the cost of goods sold during the interim periods. However, for larger companies, the periodic inventory system does not provide information regarding inventory value at hand in real time. With advanced softwares like ERP Next, one can automate this effect of inventory movement on accounts which is known as the Perpetual Inventory System. Perpetual Inventory System provides information regarding inventory and cost of goods sold in real time as each and every transaction is recorded as and when it happens. This makes it scalable for larger companies. However, since every inventory movement is reflected in books of account, any mistakes along the way can be difficult to rectify at a later period. There are different methods by which the inventory is valued. There are two main types of inventory valuation methods supported by ERP Next. Moving Average and FIFO that is first in first out. To summarize, the inventory accounting system defines how and when the effect of inventory is reflected in the books of accounts and inventory valuation methods define how each individual inventory unit is valued. Now let's see how we can manage our inventory accounting and valuation methods in ERP next. Before we explore inventory accounting, let's set up a few prerequisites that will help us understand it better. First, we need to activate perpetual inventory. We can do this by navigating to the stock settings in our company master. Here, we can see the enable perpetual inventory checkbox. It is selected by default. If we disable perpetual inventory, we will have to manage account entries manually. Next, let's set up some default accounts for our company. These accounts are created automatically in a new ERP Next system, that is, the default inventory account, stock received but not billed, stock adjustment account, and expenses included in valuation. If we want to set individual accounts for each warehouse, we can create an account head for each account. To do this, we can navigate to the chart of accounts and create a new account with the same name as the warehouse under stock assets. Now we can open the warehouse master for any particular warehouse and tag the appropriate account we just created here. This helps us filter and view statements warehouse wise. Next, we need to set up a valuation method in stock settings. We can see this setting in the item default section. By default, the valuation method is set to FIFO, which is first in, first out. If we select moving average, all new items will be evaluated at moving average. We can change the valuation method while creating new items, but once an item is saved, we can't change its valuation method. Let's see how Perpetual Inventory works while creating a purchase receipt. Perpetual Inventory 
will make it easier for us to maintain the accuracy of the company's assets and expense value. Stock balances and relevant account balances will be synced so that we won't need to add periodic manual entries to balance them. Here's an example. Suppose we have purchased 10 pieces of this item at 1200 each from a supplier. Let's make a purchase receipt for this transaction. Once we've added all the details, we can save and submit it. We can go to the stock ledger and see that the stock balance increases because of this purchase receipt. The store account is debited and a temporary account stock received but not billed is credited to maintain a double entry accounting system. When we receive a bill from the supplier for purchase receipt we just created, we will need to make a purchase invoice for it. Let's make one directly from the purchase receipt. Once we do that, we can open the general ledger and see the entries. The stock received but not billed account is debited which nullifies the effect of the purchase receipt. Now, let's create a delivery note. Suppose we have to deliver 5 chairs to a customer at 1500 each. Let's add these details to the delivery note and save and permanently submit it once done. When we open the stock ledger and general ledger, we can see the following entries. As an item is delivered from store's warehouse, store's account is credited and an equal amount is debited to the expense which is cost of goods sold. The debit or credit amount is equal to the total valuation amount of the sold items. The valuation amount is calculated based on your preferred valuation method that is FIFO or moving average or actual cost of serialized items. In this example, the valuation method is FIFO. In the case that we didn't make a delivery note against the order we created, instead we made a sales invoice directly, let's create one and add the same details as we did before. We will also need to select the update stock checkbox. Once we've added all the details we have, we can save and submit this sales invoice. Let's see the stock and the general ledger. Here, we can see that apart from the normal account entries for an invoice, stores and cost of goods sold accounts are also affected based on the valuation amount. Let's move on to an example for material receipt as well. Suppose we received 50 pieces of chairs that is going to the store's warehouse. The rate for each chair is 220 so, the total amount is 11,000. Once we make this material receipt, we can open the stock and accounting ledger. In the stock ledger, we can see that the stock has been added to the store's warehouse along with its valuation rate. In the general ledger, we can see that the stock adjustment account has been credited and the stock in hand account has been debited. Let us create a material issue. Once we create it, we can have a look at the stock and accounting ledgers. Here, we can see that the transaction is shown as an out transaction in the stock ledger. And in the general ledger, we can see that the cost of goods sold account is debited and the stock in hand account is credited. Now, let's see about material transfers. Let's see a material transfer whose status is still work in progress. If we want to see this transaction in the stock ledger, we can see the store's warehouse is debited and the work in progress warehouse is credited. There are two inventory methods in ERP Next, FIFO and Moving Average. FIFO, which is first in, first out. Let's take an example to understand them. Let's say that 
we buy 500 shares at $600 each that is 3 lakh dollars total on the 1st of july we also buy another 400 shares at $650 each worth 2 lakh 60000 dollars on the 14th of july now let's see how these shares will be valued in different inventory valuation methods in case of fifo a queue is maintained with 500 shares at $600 and 400 shares at $650 respectively the valuation and transaction will be taken based on this queue on a first in first out basis if on 16th of july 600 shares need to be sold at $1000 each with a total valuation of 6 lakh dollars then as per fifo the valuation of first 500 shares will be at $600 and the next 100 will be at $650 therefore the cost of goods sold will be $600 into 500 plus $650 into 100 that is Three lakh sixty-five thousand dollars, at a gross profit of six lakh dollars minus three lakh sixty-five thousand dollars, which is equal to two lakh fifty thousand dollars. Alternatively, in the moving average method, the purchased items will be valued differently. On the first of July, the shares will be valued at six hundred dollars each. On fourteenth July. the shares will be valued based on balance value of stock or balance stock that is according to this formula the value will be at 622 dollars each on the 16th of july when 600 shares are sold in the case of moving average at a valuation of 622 dollars The cost of goods sold will be six hundred and twenty-two into six hundred dollars at a gross profit of two lakh twenty-six thousand six hundred and sixty-six. Since the prices of goods purchased later tend to be higher, the gross profit in case of FIFO will tend to be higher than moving average. Also, using a complex valuation method like moving average is easier if perpetual inventory system is used. because otherwise the accounting teams will have to do complex calculations in case of periodic inventory system during inventory counts therefore a system like erp next makes it easier to track inventory valuation in real time and in a more tax efficient manner this brings us to the end of the second chapter of inventory management course i hope this helped you understand how inventory affects accounting in erp next you can learn more about erp next on docs.erpnext.com in the next chapter we will discuss opening stock balance and stock reconciliation thank you